In 1 Samuel chapter 17, let me go back to the beginning here. There's this giant by the name of Goliath who has come to the children of the Almighty God. Notice he came to them running his mouth, talking like he was some kind of king himself. He was huge in stature. He was above nine feet tall, to the best of my knowledge. He was indeed one of those giants in those days. <clears throat> the uh, king, the king was Saul at this time, the first king of his uh, over Israel, because the people chose him. However, we uh, we are about to come into play when uh, David, who is a very young lad at this time. <clears throat> is uh, who, who and David being whom God would choose later to be the king, not Saul. But we see that Saul, if we, want, if we read these things, uh, chapter 17, we see that Goliath is talking a good talk. He's got everybody, including the uh, king, scared to death. No man in Israel was willing to go up against this man because they looked at him and seen that he was mammoth. He was massive. He was huge. He looked like he could tear you apart and use, uh, use the remaining uh, of, uh, at like a toothpick, no doubt. <coughs> now, David... Uh, King Saul was a tall guy, good-looking guy, relatively uh, 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 good-looking guy, and uh, uh, I don't know how he was built, but uh, the Bible speaks pretty uh, well of him. <coughs> David was a little lad, but there was one thing that uh, David did, and that was he trusted in God Almighty. He didn't just say, I trust the Lord. He did indeed trust God. Uh, I want to find... Okay. I want to begin with verse uh, 32. David came and said, I will go fight this giant. He is come trying to make our God a mockery. Trying to make Israel an open shame. And, and our, I'm, I'm summing it up in my own words. Let's pick up where David is carrying on a conversation with Saul, the king. And David said to Saul, verse 32. Now notice. This is by a little lad uh, talking to the king of Israel. David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. In, in other words, because of this giant Goliath. David says, thy or your servant will go and fight with this Philistine. Talking about himself. And Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him. For thou art but a youth, and he is a man of war from his youth. And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep. Now, David was keeping his dad's sheep. That's all, that's all he was doing. He was a little shepherd boy. And there came a lion and a bear and took a lamb out of the flock. David said, and I went after him and smote him and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, 
I caught him by his beard, talking about the lion, and smote him and slew him. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine, or Philistine, whichever way you say it, shall be as one of them, seeing he hath defiled the armies of the living God. So far, little David is, is talking courageously, is he not? But see, David knows one thing. He knows that it was not him that ran after this lion and this bear and killed them both and saved the lamb. He already knows that it was his God that he served that delivered this lion into his hand. He knows already beyond doubt that this God that he serves delivered the bear into David's hand to be slain. David knows this. And what was the bear? What was the lion? It was the enemy. Now, 37, David said, Moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, Go, and the Lord be with thee. And Saul armed David with his armor. Now, you got to understand before we go any farther, David, I don't know how tall he was, but he wasn't that tall. He maybe is about my height. Little guy, he was a whole, he was real young. Uh, and Saul was a big, big guy, big king, tall. Now, and he's getting, he's putting uh, all of, the, King Saul is putting all of his armor that the king will put on and go out to fight. He's trying his best to put it on David. But we're going to find out David, he's like, hey man, this has got to come off. I can't even move with this stuff on. Now, and Saul armed David again in verse 38 with his armor. And he put a helmet of brass upon his head. And uh, also he armed him with a coat of mail. And David girded his sword upon his armor. And he essayed to go. Uh, he had not, uh, for he had not proved it. He's never uh, checked it out before to see what was going to fit and uh, be all right or nothing. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not proved them. And David put them off him. And he took his staff in his hand and chose him five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in a shepherd's bag which he had. Notice, uh, even in a script. And his sling was in his hand. And he drew near to the Philistine. And the Philistine came up, uh, came on, and drew near unto David. And the man that bare the shield went before him. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him. You know what that means? Mocked him, made fun of him. Now, Let's see what he said. He uh, uh, about and saw David, he disdained him, he, uh, for he was but a youth and ruddy and of a fair countenance, looked like a little kid coming up to this big monster of a man. And the Philistine said unto David, Am I a dog that thou couldst uh, come to me with staves or sticks? Uh, and the Philistine cursed David by his gods. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give your flesh unto the fowls of the air and to the beast of the field. That would be, uh, that would be enough to cause a person to stop in their tracks and think about what they're getting ready to do. As a matter of fact, it stopped everybody else in their tracks before they done anything. They just stood there and took it. 
They just stood there and let this man uh, profane the Lord their God. Nobody had the gall or the nerve or the faith to stand up on the behalf of their God. How many times has God said, I will fight your battle for you. I will go before you. I'll be not afraid. He told Joshua this. Don't you be afraid. Don't you be dismayed. But you be of courage. He's not only said that. The Lord added the word strong before he told Joshua this. You be of strong courage. You be of good courage. For the Lord your God, it is that will go before you. Now, in the Phil, okay, in verse 45, then David said to the Philistine, Thou are you come to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield, but I come to thee or you in the name of the Lord of hosts the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou or you have defiled. This day, listen at the brave words that comes from this little uh, lad's mouth. David said, This day will the Lord deliver thee or you into my hand, and I will smite or kill you and take your head from you, and I will give the carcass of the host or of your body the Philistine this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And this and, and all this assembly. In other words, and everybody standing here with me and over there on your side right now will shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword or spear. For the battle is the Lord's, and He will give you into our hands. And it came to pass... Can you imagine, church, how the king and Israel must have been standing there uh, uh, biting their nails, so to speak, because up until here's a little small boy going out to fight this giant and he's telling him, exact, no, I'm not going to be delivered into your hands. You're not going to do anything to me. God Almighty, He's going to turn it around, buddy. He's going to give you into my hands before your company and before all of Israel. And we're going to see today because God is going to show you and me and everybody else around that He and He alone is God. And beside Him, there is absolutely no other. How many times, church, have somebody come up against you and caused you to back away or back down in coward and run from them? A brother once upon a time, I don't mind to say it. Uh, when I first became a Christian man, I was, uh, uh, I, I always dreaded uh, once in my life at a specific time, upon a specific job, even though I was a child of God. I hadn't been a child of God very long, but there was one guy uh, that was over me in the shop. A uh, brother, when it came uh, to my job outside of the house of God, uh, before I came uh, to be a preacher of the Lord. Every time he come in, uh, just the thought of him showing up uh, filled me with nothing but dread. And I wanted to go home before he came. Oh, but praise be to God. And thanks be to God, uh, the Lord ga uh, ga uh, gave me the courage uh, to begin to stand firm upon his word and not let this man uh, bother me in any way. He came to the point until uh, he was an Italian man uh, full of a red face and his blood pressure was high ex exceedingly every time he turned around. Uh, the first day I started that job I remember uh, how big he was. That didn't bother me at all. Oh but I remember the other thing. I knew that this man hated me uh, with everything that he had in him so the only thing I wanted to do uh, was ignore him and stay away from him. Oh but he kept putting 
pushing the issue a kind of like Goliath did. I'm going to this and I'm going to that. And I finally came to my senses and said, Let's, let me tell you one thing. I will never be on the outside when it comes to you looking in. I will still be here and God will deliver you somewhere else. And brother, it came to pass just like I said. Oh, but I thank God to know church. I, I have a little uh, 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 I have a little tendency of knowing the position David was in. Although I wasn't up against a huge giant, I wasn't going to fight this man and, and other than spiritually uh, because he came to me every single day, day in and day out, and tried to cause this and that. I finally delivered everything into my God's hand and he took care of everything because I finally allowed my God to go before me and to make the path straight and to fight the battle for me on my behalf when I couldn't do a thing, didn't know what to do, didn't know what to say, didn't know how to act, what to present. I just had become a child of the king not too long before. So I was tested almost immediately, given another job that uh, everything was much better. The pay was uh, very high compared to where I was. I took it, but I had to endure so much. But at the same time, I remained true and faithful unto God. And I even told uh, 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 the people uh, that did not like me, and there was a few, People began to ask me after they seen that I was not going to be detoured from where I stood. I, that was a time in my life, church, believe you me, I had to pray constantly for of the hand of God to always be upon me and to be upon me. I begged and pleaded mightily, God, that I might be able to stand for you and upon your word at all costs. And brother God helped me to gird up my loins and to stand firm and hold fast and gave me the boldness to do just that. And brother, ever since that time, they've been people trying to come at me trying this and trying that oh but I thank God to know a church we have to learn how to do that we need to learn and have to learn how to trust God regardless of what the circumstances may look like uh, because just like David here uh, the devil brought forth uh, something that looked to be huge and tremendous uh, but David still stood upon the word of God it does not matter how I look unto you. Today is the very day God's going to deliver you into my hand. And brother, we're going to see. Everybody's going to see, including the people that are with you, that I'm going to dislocate your head. Take your head from your body. And brother, everything that you think you are is going to be fed unto the fowls of the air. And people will begin to see once and for all that God God is going to fight this battle. I'm here. You come to me with your big huge sword that I can't even lift up hardly. And you come to me with your full armor and your big massive shield. I come to you in the name of God, the God of Israel. That's all he came to him with. No armor on little David. Got a little slingshot and five little pebbles. That's all he's got. I think it was five. He just picked them up. Now, and when David threw that, uh, uh, put that in there and slung it, it was God that directed that right exactly where it needed to go to bring down the uh, enemy of God's people. God will do it. All right. 48. And it came to pass when the Philistine arose and came and drew nigh to meet David, and David hasted. He hurried and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. That, and now David wasn't like, oh, hey, I was kidding, I was kidding. But he, David meant what he said. And he took right off in the direction of this big Philistine. He ran straight towards him. He wasn't about to back away because he had faith in his God. 
If we do not have faith in our God, we will back away every single time. Church, before we go on, how many times has it come to you where the hand of the devil has been able and allowed by the Lord to withhold things that are good from you just for a little while? Brother, your faith will be tested because God already said it will. It will not be God that tempts any man because God tempts nobody. Neither is he tempted by sin. But how many times has the devil been allowed to bring a position or a situation into your life to cause you to start doubting even when you're praying and crying out to God Almighty. It seems like it only gets worse and worse. Hold on church and keep the faith in God because the word of God cannot be uh, 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 cannot be taken away. Uh, the word of God cannot be changed. And if God ta- and God cannot lie, and brother, he will never, eh, because he cannot go back upon his word. If he said, I will go before you, you can believe that with everything in you, it will be God Almighty. Just continue to hold on. Continue to pray unto him. He sees your every need. He knows how desperate times are. He knows what you're in need of. And brother, he will not see your children go hungry one way or another. Praise God. He'll take it from the rich if that's what he has to do uh, to make sure his people are filled with the goodness that come down from him in the beginning. God will never leave under any circumstances. Nobody can make God run. And God showed this, did he not, in a little lad. They're going to run towards this massive uh, uh, warrior from his youth. He's been trained to kill and fight. That's all he's about. And now he's huge. And, and, and God showed everybody, I will not run from anyone. I am the Lord, uh, David is God. Beside me, uh, there is none other. And today, I'm going to show you. David had faith. It looked like David had no hope to the regular eye. How many times have you been in that position? There is always hope when a child of God comes into play and when a child of God holds on to his God. Now, uh, and it came to, okay, 49, and David put his hand in his bag and took thence a stone and slang it and smote the Philistine in his forehead that the stone sunk into his forehead and he being Goliath the giant fell upon his face to the earth notice this before we go any farther David didn't even David did not it does not tell me that the, uh, the thing I see David do before he takes this little uh, stone out of the bag puts it in the sling and let it rip uh, the last thing I see David doing is running it with everything in him towards this big ma- uh, massive warrior and while he's running he's and God directs everything this man falls David did not have to lay a hand on this enemy Notice that. Did not have to go and touch him, lay a hand on him at all. God brought him down. God says, I will cause those that hate you to bow down unto you. It it don't say in those words, I'm paraphrasing it, but that's what God uh, tells you and I. I will cause them to serve you. All right, David put his hand in his bag. I'm going to, uh, 50. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone and smote or killed the Philistine and slew him. But there was no sword in the hand of David. Therefore David ran and stood upon the Philistine and took his sword and took out the uh, Philistine's massive sword and drew it out of the shelf thereof, and slew him, and cut off his head therewith, or with it. And the Philistines saw their champion was dead, they fled. Look at that. One person, one person, had all of Israel shaken in their shoes. 
biting their nails, no doubt. Even had the king to where he wasn't man enough, couldn't find it in him to be the king that he needed to be at that time. Here come a little lad, David. God used that little lad for mirac uh, miraculously before the eyes of everyone, did he not? Did not have to lay a hand on the enemy. The whole enemy of all of Israel, or the enemy of the, uh, all of Israel. Uh, and David didn't stop when he fell down. He was like, well, <laughs> that's enough. I'm close enough. I don't need to go over and check him out. He went over there and stood up on him and then struggled, no doubt, to get that huge sword out. And God gave him the strength to raise it up and do exactly what he said he was going to do. What did God do in this? He brought everything David said to pass in front of everybody that David was in front of. Notice that. Keep that in mind, church. He, David spoke from his heart in the authority of, of God, of His God, of God Almighty, and in the power of God Almighty. God heard this man just like uh, Joshua once when they were fighting the battle. It was not Joshua who was fighting the enemy when Joshua looked to the sun and said, Son, stand still until I avenge me of mine enemies. Why do you think we have different time zones everywhere? No doubt it goes right back to that time when the sun was caused to stand still by the Lord God Almighty on the behalf of one man, Joshua that looked up at the sun because it was getting ready to go down and he was not done of pursuing or chasing the enemy of God. And brother, he told the sun, stand still, son, until I continue this battle and kill everyone that is against God's people. A uh, brother, God heard that man speak and God caused that son uh, to stand still until the time came when the enemies were all in the hands of Joshua what God's man and brother God did it to David did he not he did not cause anything like that but he delivered the enemy into the hand of David I think the king's name once upon a time if I mistake that was Hezekiah a God a, a, a God appeared unto him and visited him while it was upon his bed of affliction and said Hezekiah uh, the time has come get your house in order because you're getting ready to go out of this world and Hezekiah prayed unto God and brother God heard that man and gave him 15 extra years and when the uh, and when the man came into the room of Hezekiah uh, and tried to get Hezekiah to believe of that his prayer was answered he said Hezekiah ask of me or ask of God rather uh, that if the sun should move forward 10 degrees or should it move back uh, I mean uh, move forward 10 degrees and, and Hezekiah said no it's easy for the sun to go forward 10 degrees but have it move back 10 degrees and I will know beyond doubt and brother no doubt him, uh, 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 don't let no doubt be in your mind God heard the prayer of that man and turned that uh, 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 turned the sun backward uh, 10 degrees and another effect on the time zone somewhere no doubt Everything has its purpose. Everything can be explained uh, why it's like, how is it daylight there and it's dark here? When we read the Bible, we can begin to put things together because of men of God that stood upon God's word and believed God, spoke to things as if it was going to do exactly what it said. That does not mean that we can go out and be a show off and show, well, watch this, a hey, moon. It don't work that way. If I think that I can walk out into the uh, walk, get on a boat and jump off of it and say, watch me walk on this water. Uh, I'm 99 point. Well, I, uh, I'm absolutely sure <laughs> that if I do that, I will most likely drown if I can't swim back to the boat eventually. But, because I shall not tempt the Lord my God. Amen. But at the same time, if I'm out anywhere and something it, it, and an accident takes place, God can cause 
anybody that has faith in him to actually submerge on top of that water and get to dry land or just slide that whatever walking across the street you have no idea that this thing is up on you about to take your life could be a bus truck whatever it can pass right through and and you not even know what just happened he's like i didn't see that truck i didn't see that car i didn't see that motorcycle maybe some of you been there i don't know how he didn't hit me i do i do we don't think about a lot of things that we should think about. If God can do all of this, and He has, surely He will take care of His own. He promises that. He will take care of His own. Now, uh, there, let's see, off His head on 51, uh, He cut His head off and uh, everybody fled. One man went down. <laughs> and now let's see how fast the tables have turned. See how fast God has made a name before the enemies and before His own people. How long, church, and how many times over and over has God told Israel, you will not believe. You will not give me the honor that is due unto me. I have chosen you. You have not chosen me. I chose you, Israel. I brought you out of bondage, slavery, with a mighty hand. I had to lead you through the wilderness for 40 years so that you would finally, in hopes that you would begin to believe me, begin to trust me, begin to have your faith in me, begin to take me at my word because of your own unbelief. You had to spend 40 years in the wilderness. And when the time came, I parted the Red Sea. You did not walk on a, a muddy sea, muddy land, muddy ground. You walked on dry ground. And you and you everybody came through. And when I told when your enemy came into it trying to uh, subdue you and chase after you, I told you to look upon these people, for you shall see them no more. God did all of that for his people. Moses told the people, Behold, look upon the enemy, for God says you will see them no more. The waters came in. Drowned the horses, every man in the chariots. And uh, the movie will say Pharaoh made it out alive, but the Bible tells me Pharaoh was right in that, if I'm not mistaken. I've seen both movies. I see all kinds of movies, but I'll take the Word of God over any kind of movie. No matter how close they might come to getting somebody to understand what 